All right, if you would all please lie on your backs. And today's lesson is the big X. So start with connecting with all of the tubes of your body. You have the trunk tube, your trunk, your spine, how your sacrum rests on the floor, how your lower back curves away from the floor, how your middle back and your ribs reconnect and are supported by the floor. Again, you'll sense your neck curving away from the floor and that point where the back of your head makes contact. Feel that tube, the tube of your spine, your head connected to the top, the periphery of the trunk, the ribs, the organs, the chest, the sternum. And then bring your attention to your arm tubes. your right arm and your left arm. And what, if anything, can you notice that's different about your two arms? Does one feel lighter or heavier? Longer or shorter? Can you imagine which one would be easier to lift up off the floor? If you were to notice that you have a stability side and a mobility side, which arm do you think is your stability arm? And which arm is your mobility arm? I was asked last week in a different class about your dominant side and really wanted to point out that you'll have a dominant stability side which usually makes the other side your dominant mobility side. It takes both for effective, effortless, graceful movement and a sense of your body. And then bring your attention down to your two tubular legs. And notice, with an appreciation, differences, the opportunity to sense that there really are subtle differences in one leg from the other. From all your years of creating this particular organization of how you move and stabilize your body, you will likely feel differences from one side to the next. And not to be concerned if you don't have a sense of differences from side to side yet. Because eventually you will learn to appreciate your normal and natural asymmetries. And learn that those asymmetries give your mind something to attend to. If you were perfectly even and balanced all the time, it would be more difficult to notice certain things and to be inspired towards even more healthy and graceful movements. So if you're able to, bring your legs long so that your knees are not bent and spread them apart just a little bit. And bring your focus to your right leg and what does it take to make your right leg longer? How would you move in your leg, your hip, your pelvis to just gently lengthen that right leg as if you were going to reach out with your toes and maybe just touch something that's just a half inch beyond the bottom of your foot. And just let it go and lengthen it and do this many times, just a very small movement. 
and noticing how your pelvis moves to support this movement. Noticing if this is difficult or challenging for you, what's the inner talk? What does that voice in your head have to say about your capabilities, your competence, your effectiveness, or the stupid instructions that the teacher is giving you? And just notice that voice and come back to gently exploring your way to this idea of the possibility of being able to lengthen your right leg. And while you're doing that, notice that if the right leg is lengthening ever so slightly, the left leg is shortening. And maybe bringing that piece into your awareness might somehow make it a little easier. Does it change anything in how you sense your pelvis participating in the movement? And each time you let the leg go, let it go completely. Settle back fully in your resting position. And then lengthen again, feeling your pelvis. And does anything happen in your ribs or shoulders or neck? Does your breathing stay smooth and gentle? Or is there an efforting quality? And although this is a very small movement, it actually brings quite a bit of attention to the organization of your lower back. So be cognizant of what you're doing, although our attention is on your leg, how this might be influencing your lower back. And make sure you're taking care of yourself, not trying too hard or doing too much. Letting the movement stay very small and gentle. And then just resting. And just resting now, begin to notice any changes that are taking place in how you sense your right leg resting here and your left leg. And then bring your attention fully to your left leg and begin experimenting with making your left leg just a little longer. Noticing right away what happens in your pelvis, in your low back. If your left leg is getting a little longer, can you feel how your right leg gets a little shorter? And if you allow your neck and your chest to be free, you might notice that your head wants to roll just a little bit also. Which way does your head want to roll? Is your jaw relaxed? Is your tongue soft in your mouth? Often in these movements, we're learning to move with less and less effort, greater and greater ease. And how do we translate learning to move with less effort into our everyday lives. So that by the end of the day, we have more energy. We haven't been exerting so much effort and energy holding our breaths or tightening our jaws. We're just tensing our muscles unnecessarily to accomplish things. And just rest your legs for a moment. Where does the mind wander? How do we teach the mind to linger in our sensations? To 
feel our bodies, to let our bodies teach us and guide us into gracefully walking through our lives. And then begin gently alternating, lengthening the right leg, resting, and then the left leg. And can you really feel the differences between the two sides? Is it a different organization to lengthen one side than the other? Does your pelvis function differently? Is there a different sense of your trunk or your ribs? or the possibility of your head rolling. If one side feels a little more awkward than the other side, maybe in your brain you say something like, oh, yeah, that's my good side. That's my easy side. And often that means you have a bad side, which is not true. But we tend to categorize things in this way. So the side that is more awkward, can you mimic that side with the opposite side? What is it that makes it awkward or heavy or reach less far? And you try to copy some of those sensations on the side that tends to move a little more easily. And then just let them each Lengthen and shorten a couple more times and rest. And now bring your right arm up over your head at an angle. So out to the side at an angle, resting on the floor. And if it's difficult to rest it on the floor, you might want to take a pillow or a towel roll so your shoulders completely relaxed, not straining, comfortable. And now slowly begin to reach with the back of your arm, the back of your hand, lengthening your arm up and out at that angle and releasing it. And you might feel the back of your hand just sliding a little bit along the floor. What does it take to lengthen that arm? Maybe if your elbow is bent a little bit, you can at least figure out how to straighten your elbow. But what else happens? What else needs to happen in the shoulder, in the ribs, in the neck? That right arm to lengthen out and up at an angle to the side. And if you reach a certain distance and then it just stops. What stops it from moving? If you were to make your arm go farther, what would you have to push past? Where would you have to effort to lengthen that arm further? And don't do it. Just notice it. How do you listen to your body and stop at that place of efforting? And just be curious. Just be interesting. Oh, isn't that interesting that I feel tightness here or there? Moving slowly so you can really feel the shoulder and the shoulder blade. 
the connection into the arm and the ribs. And again, as you reach your arm and bring it back to resting position, does any movement happen? Is there any suggestion of movement in your left arm? So reaching your arm up and out to the side, what else happens in your opposite arm? Or even down into your pelvis and legs? Is there any lengthening or shortening there that somehow seems related to the impulse to lengthen your right arm? And then just bring your arm down and rest it at your side. And listen. Listening, how's your shoulder doing? Did you hold it in an awkward position too long? Is it resting peacefully now? And feeling the sensations that may be different now between your right arm and your right leg. I'm sorry, your right arm and your left arm. Hopefully your right arm and your right leg feel different. But notice how your right arm rests now at your side and the quality of how your left arm rests. And then bring your left arm up and out to the side finding just the right angle so that the shoulder is relaxed, there's no strain in the neck, and begin the exploration again, just gently reaching and relaxing and feeling the connections or the non-connections. Some of you will instantly feel connections into your trunk, your neck, your opposite arm or your legs. And others of you, especially if you're newer to this work, will be acutely aware that you don't feel any connections. So just be curious about that. What can you feel? The back of your arm sliding on the floor? That place in your shoulder or your chest or your ribs? just before you begin efforting. Can you notice that tendency where you want to reach and stretch, but you're holding back, staying in the parameters of gentleness, listening, breathing, learning to do movement slowly. So you can really feel what's going on so that your brain has an opportunity to respond, to learn, and to change. And then bring your hand and arm down to your side. One leg at a time, please bend your knees up. And just gently rock your knees a little bit from side to side. And roll your head a little bit from side to side. Just change the configuration a little bit. And notice, do you take your head and your knees in the same direction or in opposite directions? Just notice and then maybe play with taking them opposite a couple of times. And just rest in the middle. Bring your left leg down long and your right arm out, up and out to the side. And lengthen your left leg and see what happens with your right arm. Does your right arm feel the connection? Does it tend to want to shorten? or lengthen. 
or does anything happen? Can you feel the potential of that right arm shortening? Feel the movement in your pelvis, through your ribs. And then try making your right arm longer. See if your left leg gets shorter. And just alternate with your intention on your right arm getting longer and then your left leg getting longer. Now for some of you, you will feel that they want to get longer together and that is another possibility. So notice for you how the movement travels through you. Can you try both? Can you, can you feel that there, there is an option for one to get longer while the other gets shorter? How many of you can feel that possibility? One longer, the other shorter. Okay, about half of you. So how many feel like when one gets longer, the other one wants to get longer? Okay, so some of you can feel both and the rest of you, so we're half and half. So you out there in CD world, you're not doing it wrong. But do play. The, the possibility of doing it both ways is there. I'll be honest, I, I didn't know how to shorten one while the other lengthened until probably the third or fourth time I did this lesson. It was not in my organization to figure out how to lengthen my arm and shorten my leg. So be gentle and curious and interested. What is that? And then just rest for a moment. Let everything rest. Roll your head a couple times right and left. And if it's easy for you, roll your eyes in the opposite direction. Gently, slowly, like you've got those big size marbles in your eye sockets and they're just gliding side to side, floating in their eyeball fluid. And come back to the middle and switch so that your left arm is up and out to the side and your right leg is lengthened. For some of you it'll be easier to keep your left knee bent so really pay attention to the comfort of your low back and pelvis. And experiment with the lengthening and shortening of your left arm and right leg. First just notice what's your natural inclination as you lengthen one. And what is happening through the trunk, through the spine, through the ribs, through the pelvis. What if you lengthened your left arm and actually thought about also lengthening your left leg so that your right leg got shorter? Does that make it any more obvious? All right, and rest your arm, rest your leg. Feel the tubes. Feel each of your arms resting here now. Your right arm, your left arm. Each of your legs. All connected by the tube of your trunk, your spine, and all of its accoutrements. What's it like to feel? What's it like to spend this time just feeling, feeling you, 
feeling your senses, your body, your connections, giving yourself permission to change, to possibly re-enter the world a little different at the end of this lesson than before with new insights and awarenesses, new access to what feels good, more access to your wellness and well-being. So bend each of your knees up, please, and bring both of your arms up into an angle out to the side, up and out. And begin alternating, reaching the right arm, relaxing, and then reaching the left arm and relaxing. And with your knees bent like this, how can your feet help? When you reach with one arm, is one foot more inclined to press a little bit to help your pelvis be involved, your ribs, helping the length occur more easily and naturally in your arm. And let your neck go and let your head roll towards the arm that is reaching, the arm that is lengthening. Easily letting your breath be full and your jaw be soft. So there's several things going on. There's attention to the movement and then there's the observer in you that's making a commentary to you about how you move. So notice for a moment the commentary. The commentary, as one of you mentioned at the beginning, is not you. It's just, it's often the commentary that you've practiced so often and it's often not so positive. It's not always like, the coach or the cheerleading team on the sidelines. So notice your own commentary and see if you can begin learning a new commentary. This is nice. This is good. I'm okay. I'm good enough just the way I am. This is just adding to my well-being. What fun to have time to explore and experiment. Now see if you can roll your head the opposite way. So rolling your head towards the arm that is not lengthening. Maybe it's shortening a little bit. Still noticing what your feet do, what your pelvis does. And notice, do you reach and relax in kind of a, an uh, instant, sudden kind of movement? Or are you just lengthening with your breath and releasing with your breath? What's your style of how you create your own pace for lengthening, reaching, and relaxing? And try it both ways. Try just a more abrupt kind of reach and relax. Feel how that works through your system. That can be a useful way when suddenly somebody tosses you the keys and you have to grab them. And then noticing what I would consider the more softer mm -hmm. movement, but that might not be your experience of pacing each lengthening and shortening with the lengthening of the inhalation and the exhalation. And then again, bring your arms down to your sides and rest. And then bring your legs down long and begin experimenting with alternating the lengthening of your legs. You can spread your feet out a little wider 
and just lengthen and release one leg and feel the influence of the movement through the rest of your body, your pelvis and spine, your ribs, your shoulders. Notice that the other leg shortens when the one leg lengthens. Feel that in your system. Does your head want to roll? In which way does your head want to just naturally roll? Does it roll towards the side where you're lengthening your leg or towards the side where the other leg is shortening? Notice how that is for you. And just really let it go. Let your head follow the movement that feels most natural. And see if you can take your eyes in the opposite direction of your head. And then again, rest. And with your legs down and out a little bit, bring your arms up and out a little bit. And reach with your right arm and feel what happens with your left arm, your right leg, your left leg. What would it take to make your right arm and your right leg longer together while your left arm and your left leg got shorter? What happens in your pelvis and your trunk? Now, for some of you, this feels like the more natural movement. And for others of you, you might think I'm crazy. But just remember what I said at the beginning. I, I was crazy until I, I did this lesson several times. And not several times in a row. When we experiment with Feldenkrais lessons, it's actually better to do many different lessons and then come back to one that was interesting or challenging because we will have acquired new senses and new sensations so that when we eventually return to what we think is the same lesson, it will be a different lesson to our body because your body is different now. Your body has new pieces of information. And then switch sides, lengthening the left arm and the left leg, shortening the right arm and the right leg. Again, noticing, do you tend to reach more suddenly and relax? suddenly, so it's a burst of energy, of movement. Try that a few times, bursting the movement through yourself, and then relaxing into the movement during your inhalation, lengthening the left arm and leg, shortening the right arm and leg, and then bringing everything back to neutral with the exhalation. And which way does your head want to roll? And then continue the movement through so that you're alternating. Lengthening one side, letting your head roll, lengthening the other side. And try letting your head roll initially. Try letting it roll towards the side that's lengthening. Nice, nice. Just softly breathing. Lengthening one side, shortening the other. Head rolling. And then let your head roll towards the side that's shortening. And can you do that? And with just as much grace and effortlessness 
While your head is rolling towards the side that is shortening, can you let your eyes roll towards the side that is lengthening? Just for fun. Only if it's pleasing to you, interesting, playful and curious. Not to make it hard work. Not to achieve anything but self-discovery. And then rest for a moment. Rest your arms. Bend your knees up if you need to. You might just wobble your knees a little bit left and right, feeling the pressure behind your pelvis. Letting your head roll with the same direction or the opposite direction with your knees. Bring your legs down long again, a little bit apart, and your arms up over your sort of your head out to an angle, up to the side. And just experiment in any way you'd like. You might want to experiment with the sensation that is more familiar to some people of lengthening the right arm and the left leg simultaneously so that the opposite arm and leg get a little shorter. What's that like? This is the one that was most familiar to my organization the first several times I did the lesson and decided that the teacher was crazy. And then just play a little bit. Reach here, reach there, shorten here, shorten there. Can you do it without any rhythm at all? Arrhythmic. The arrhythmic X. Sounds like a funky band. It has this funky dance. And then bring it back into rhythm. Whatever configuration is most pleasant, most pleasing, most fluid and graceful, just do that a few more times, lengthening, shortening, letting your neck and spine and pelvis be soft. And when you've done that a few last times, bring your arms down to your sides, please. And just feel, feel your tubes. What's different now than at the beginning of the lesson? The senses that are available in your right arm and your left arm, your right leg and your left leg. The length of your spine. And then stay in your own perception of your sensations for a while as you roll to your sides, as you sit up, and as you stand. Take some time. Linger in yourself. And slowly re-enter the rest of the world.